Today we begin reading from the book of Genesis. And we'll follow the book for a number of days to come. I find today's first reading very interesting in the sense that the first four verses of Genesis that we encounter speak to us of those things that are important in our understanding of the scriptures. In the Catholic tradition, the book of Genesis is not to be taken literally. It is not an account of how the cosmos and all that is within it came into being. If anything, it highlights the fundamental facts that there is a God, a God of order. And it also highlights that there is in this cosmos a purpose. We are not living in a purposeless cosmos. It also highlights that this cosmos which we inhabit is good. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, difficult as it might be that we may think of a God of order who orders things and does away with chaos. A God who has a purpose for the universe and a God who brought good things into being. These are highlighted in our first reading today. Several times when you read the story of creation and God has created something, it comes as a refrain that God saw it and it was good. Is that goodness that at times we can lose the sense of? Coincidentally, today happens to be the feast of Josephine Bakita. A feast that maybe speaks to us about the loss of goodness that can visit us in life. The young Josephine is kidnapped at an age thought to be seven or eight in the southern part of Sudan, in the Darfur region. Kidnapped, she's enslaved. As a slave, she's changed from one master to the other. Till an Italian consul had a worker who got Josephine as their slave. And when the consul's time had finished, he had to go back to Italy. And he went with Josephine. The young girl who had been so traumatized that she had forgotten the name her parents gave to her. She had forgotten the name of her clan. When she gets to Italy, she is given to a friend of the former consul in Sudan. And the friend has Josephine look after his children. And then he has to go out on a mission and sends Josephine and his child to the Canossian sisters where the child is to be catechized and to be educated in the faith. Providentially, Josephine falls in love with the Christian faith and she starts taking lessons herself and is baptized and confirmed. By the time 
the owner of the slave comes. The sisters start a case. On behalf of Josephine, that she be set free. The case drags, but in the end, she is set free. The judge says, in Italy, slavery is not acceptable. From the very moment she set her foot in this land, she is a free woman. As a free woman, Josephine joins the sisters. She spends her life in the service of God. She is that woman, a nameless one, who when her kidnappers get her, they name her Bakita or Bakita, which means fortunate. How dare you call someone you are abusing a fortunate person? My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this dovetails with today's gospel. Where Jesus goes back to Genesaret, where he had been asked to live, and this time when he gets there, people notice him for who he is, their healer. And they bring all sorts of people who are sick. And it is said, some desire to touch the hem of his coming and be cured. Jesus heals so many people. He restores good health to them. Jesus, as it were, brings out goodness from those who are downtrodden by the evils of our world. Josephine Bakita has been involved in the church as the patron saint of slaves, modern day slaves. We speak here of human trafficking. We speak here of people who are held against their wills and prostitution. And maybe today it will be a wonderful thing for us to pause and think of the modern day slavery in our country. And to hear the message of today's gospel that says all that God created was good. And may the Lord give us the grace that we may live to uphold that goodness and to champion it in everyone's life and in our creation.